Hi, my name is Galen Pounder. I am a field application engineer from Tektronix, supporting the Greater Pacific Northwest and Western Canada. So today, I've had a lot of questions recently about USB 2.0 testing, so I wanted to do a quick video, a kind of down and dirty video, to describe how to do it. So today I'm going to do USB 2.0 device compliance on an MSO58. And to do the test, first you need an oscilloscope, so you might as well get the best one on the market. That's the MSO58 series 2 GHz oscilloscope. As you see, it has eight channels. You also need Windows Drive, USB 2 software, jitter software on that, so uh, on that oscilloscope to run this test. Also need two analog probes. Here we have TAP1500s. These are appropriate for the test. A differential probe. Here is a TDP3500. It is also needed for the test. Two SMA cables matched pair with BNC to SMA adapters so that you can hook it into the oscilloscope. A current probe. TDS USB F fixtures. These come from Tektronix. They actually come as one fixture. You split them apart. And then USB IF fixtures. Uh, this is the device test fixture, the host test fixture, and the droop test fixture. I won't be doing any droop testing today because I'm only going to be doing high speed signal analysis. Also with that uh, USB 2 uh, fixture set from the USB IF, you'll get a short USB cable for some of the tests. You'll need a regular USB 2 cable and you will need a host to control the device when you're doing device testing. The host, we re strongly recommend that host contains uh, Windows 10 and that so that you can run the H set from the USB IF. You have to download that from the USB IF. Here I've started the test software. If you go under Applications Tech Express USB 2, uh, the test software will start up. Uh, today I'm going to be testing a device, a uh, simple USB stick. So that's what I'm going to be testing. Also, I am not going to be doing the receiver portions of the test because I do not have an AWG 5200, which is what we recommend to use for those tests. Um, in this Tech Express USB 2 window, I can pick which tests I want to do. Um, picking device compliance, acquiring live waveforms. I go ahead and click off low speed and full speed tests because I am not going to be doing those. I'm going to use both test methods and I'm going to be testing the near end to start. For my test selection, I'm going to go ahead and choose all tests with the exception of the receiver sensitivity tests since I do not have the, um, the instrument needed for those tests. Under acquisitions, I'm going to go ahead and pick my differential configuration. I'm going to put, plug my differential probe into channel 3. Um, channel 3. So that I can uh, have more than two probes plugged in. Um, and this allows me to do both probe types. Under configuration, um, as you can see, I do not have a signal generator. Uh, this is just the configuration for the setups, for the global settings, and under measurements, each measurement has a different configuration that you can change. Uh, if you need to, you can also change the limits in the limits editor. And now we can actually begin the test. So I'm going to push start. See in the corner it says initialize runtime environment. This might take some time. And then initially it comes up and says, OK, connect to the dot like this. Here I've connected the device as per the diagram I showed you earlier. Uh, this is the device fixture. This part is going to my control PC where I've already started the H set program. And the SMAs going directly into the oscilloscope, positive 
negative channel 1, channel 2 for the testing. So now that I have everything connected and I push OK, and the system starts. We are set up, so now I need to enumerate the bus and send a test packet. So I do that over here on the HSET program. So first I push test. I enumerate the bus. successful then I send the test packet I push execute so I push the test packet I push OK you'll note that there is no test packet yet and that's because I need to set the switch on the device fixture so if we look at the device fixture itself, we can see that it's got a switch on it in between. So when we start, the device itself is directly in contact with your host, but it does not go through the uh, SMA cables to the scope. When I flip this switch, now it's sending test packets to the scope. So it is disconnected from your host, and the device is actually sending the signals back into the oscilloscope. And this is what you should see on the oscilloscope. Push OK. And the oscilloscope will run. We'll capture the waveform. Do a quick check of the waveform to make sure that it is a proper test packet. And then complete that portion. For the next portion, I've got to change my connections and add some uh, probes. So as you can see, I've changed my setup. I now have two TAP 1500 probes grounded to the device. I have my short cable to the host for control. And I have a long cable going to a convenient USB port for power. On this port, you actually want the red light on. For this that allows the signal to go into the device itself so now that we've got everything connected I can push OK the device will run and it says click enumerate bus on the H set tool so I come over to H set and I enumerate the bus once you enumerate the bus, the first pattern will appear. This is what it should look like. Push OK. It will save that pattern and go to the next pattern. Now it says send suspend on H set. So I go back to H set. and push suspend execute this is the waveform you should see for suspend push ok it runs now we do the resume command you see we see how a, a way of doing things here and this zoom back out again is a pattern you should see for resume or something similar to that Saves that way for more way, and now we need the reset command. Just moving back and forth here, trying to 
get all these done and reset should look something similar to this. Now they won't look exactly like this on your platform but it should have some similarity here. And we'll save that waveform away. Now it says to send the reset command again but first make sure the device is in the suspend state. So the way I'm going to ensure that is to first go to suspend and then click reset and I've got a pattern that looks very similar to the numerate pattern that we saw earlier push OK and it saves that waveform away Now we need to change our connections again to the differential probe from the single-ended probes. So now I've changed my connections once more. This is a TDP 3500 probe connected and that is going to the scope here channel 3 because that's what I did in my initial configuration. Push OK. It reminds me that I'm on channel 3. Push OK sets it up for channel 3 triggering you can say because on our oscilloscope we tell you the color what channel is highlighted what channel is triggering on see over here on these lights so let's look at single step feature in the H set tool so I go here single step feature push execute and this is the waveform you should see. Now, I've seen devices have problems outputting this waveform to begin with. You might see just two of these pulses, but you need all three. If you don't have all three, I would enumerate the bus first and then try again. Now it says to click step once again, so that's all I'm going to do. I'm going to click that here. And you can see that is the a waveform you need to see, two bursts, push OK and it will complete that waveform and now I need to reconnect for the inrush current test. So I have hooked up the test for the inrush current connected to my host, my device, on the fixture with the switch to switch it on and off and the current probe in the proper direction pay attention to the arrows on both the current probe and on the fixture so now I have everything hooked up and connected I push OK so it says switch S5 to DUT on position when I do that it triggers and we have a response you can see over here so push OK it saves that waveform and now we go through the test in this case my old device I failed eye diagram and signal rate I'm not really sure why let's take a look at the testing yeah, my eye diagram is a little short here for the near probably would pass the far end and here is that waveform that shows you pictures from all the rest of the waveforms as they were done